All right, welcome to The Explainer. And wow, if you've been online at all recently, you have seen it. The headlines, the tweets, the absolutely wild demos. OpenAI has dropped its next generation model and the hype is, well, it's off the charts. I mean, you had early testers and influencers just immediately declaring this thing a massive leap forward. People were calling it a game-changing tool, you know, a real glimpse into the future. But as with any major tech launch, there's always the hype, and then there's the real story. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut through all that noise. What did OpenAI actually promise with GPT-5? What did those incredible early demos really show us? And maybe most importantly, how does it actually hold up when you put it to the test in the real world? Okay, so first things first. To really get what all the fuss is about, we have to start with the official claims. What did OpenAI promise that got everyone so fired up? Well, the first huge promise was all about simplicity. You know how before you had this kind of confusing menu of models? GPT-4.0, this mini version, that turbo version. Well, the idea now is forget all that. Now there's just one single unified GPT-5. And it's supposed to be smart enough to figure out the best way to handle whatever you throw at it. And yeah, let's be super clear here. They weren't just selling this as like a minor tune-up. This was positioned as a fundamental step up, a rethink of how you interact with AI. It's designed to be a single state-of-the-art model that gives you the best possible answer every single time. And they didn't just say it. They came with receipts. Look at these numbers. On some really tough advanced reasoning benchmarks, GPT-5's thinking mode apparently scored an 88%. I mean, look at that. It's not just a little better. It's blowing its predecessor and its biggest competitors right out of the water. All right, so with that kind of promised brain power, we started seeing some truly jaw-dropping demos. And the real showstopper? It's coding ability. People started showing how it could build entire applications from, like, a single sentence. Okay. Check this out. A user just types in this super simple prompt. Make me a game of Tetris that I can play in Canvas. That's it. No detailed instructions, no complex list of requirements, just make me Tetris. And the result? Whoa. In just 19 seconds, it produced a fully playable game. But here's the crazy part, the part that really got everyone talking. It didn't just build a bare bones version. It intuitively added a scoring system, levels, and a next piece display. All the stuff that makes it feel like a complete, polished game. It just figured it out. And this one-shot magic, as people were calling it, just kept coming. Another tester asks for a Twitter front end, and boom. A couple of minutes later, there it is. A shockingly accurate clone with a clean, modern look, and buttons for exploring and messaging that actually work. It's unreal. It even whipped up a 2D web-swinging game with surprisingly solid physics from another simple prompt. At this point, it seemed like GPT-5 could just speak software into existence. The initial hype seemed completely 100% justified. But, you know what's coming, right? The but? The model starts rolling out to more and more people. And as other testers started putting it through its paces, a more, let's just say, a more complicated and, yeah, sometimes disappointing picture started to emerge. This right here is a perfect example. In a very telling head-to-head, -head, a user took a demo prompt directly from OpenAI's own launch materials for a little jumping ball game. When they ran it in GPT-5, the code it produced, well, it just failed. It didn't work. But then they gave the exact same prompt to its competitor, Claude, and it created a perfect playable game. Ouch. And this inconsistency wasn't just a coding thing. It popped up in other areas, too. When asked to create a themed birthday invitation, the older GPT-4.0 produced a really creative, sophisticated design. GPT-5, on the other hand, it gave back something that was just bland, low effort. It was a clear step backward. And pretty soon, a pattern started to emerge. Testers found that, yep, it still confidently makes things up. Its writing could be really inconsistent, sometimes feeling kind of wooden. 
Image generation wasn't a clear improvement, and in some cases, it was worse. And for all that one-shot magic on simple apps, it struggled with really complex code or using other tools. The magic definitely had its limits. Okay, so where does that leave us? If it's not the flawless super intelligence from those first demos, what's the real story of the GPT-5 launch? What should we all actually take away from this whole thing? You know, one expert, Varun Maya, put it perfectly. The key takeaway isn't about whether this one model is perfect or not. It's about recognizing the incredible pace of change. It's understanding that being able to adapt is the most important skill in this new era. The person who wins is the one who reconfigures the fastest. But perhaps the biggest story of all is the price. A brand new, much more powerful baseline of AI capability has just been established. And for the first time, this state-of-the-art power is rolling out to everyone, even free users, for zero dollars. So here's the bottom line. GPT-5 is a massive upgrade that raises the standard for what's possible with AI, and it makes that power more accessible than ever before. It's faster, it's simpler to use, and it's incredible for certain tasks like brainstorming or simple coding. But, and this is a big but, it is not perfect. It is not a flawless oracle. It's a powerful tool and one that requires our own judgment and critical thinking now more than ever. Because ultimately, the technology is here, whether it's perfect or not. The game is changing faster than ever, and the next big leap is inevitable. It's just around the corner. So the only question that really matters is, how will you adapt?